Four note chords up the C major scale, up the fretboard. Let's break that down. Hello friends and welcome back to Swift Lessons for another mini guitar tutorial. In today's session, we're going back to the fundamentals, expanding our knowledge of guitar chords as we learn to convert the C major scale to its chordal form using four note harmonies. So what you're going to learn in this lesson is very useful. We're going to learn some essential chord shapes and it's going to help you to learn songs faster. It's going to give you some more fretboard awareness, but most importantly, it's going to help you with your composition skills. So I want you to take your time learning each of these shapes. Make sure they're committed to muscle memory. And once you have everything down, see if you can flex that creative muscle and get started writing your own music. Now, you can follow along using my PDF study guide at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. Support the channel there for just a couple bucks a month and gain access to a ton of extra resources for all my popular YouTube guitar lessons. Now, let's get started. Okay, close look at the fretboard. Getting started mapping out the four notes harmonies that we have going up the fretboard, essentially converting our C major scale to chordal form. So let's start there, our C major scale on a single string. These will serve as the root notes for each of these seven chords and the octave. So, starting on C, the third fret of the A string, we're simply going to travel whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half up the fretboard. So C, a whole step up to D, a whole step up to E, a half step to F, a whole step up to G, a whole step up to A, another whole step up to B, and a half step to C. Now each of these scale tones needs to be converted to a specific type of chord. The first note, C, is converted to a C major seven chord. The second scale degree D becomes a minor seven. The uh, third scale degree E also becomes minor seven. The four chord or the fourth scale degree F becomes major seven. The fifth scale degree G becomes dominant seven. All right, very bluesy. All right, the sixth scale degree, uh, oftentimes called the relative minor, becomes a minor seven. And the seventh scale degree becomes a half diminished. This is B half diminished. And then obviously the eighth note of the scale is the octave, and that is going to be a major seven. One octave up from where we started. Okay, so using the tab from patreon.com slash swiftlessons, let's get each of these chord shapes down. So the first chord is C major seven. I'm barring the third fret, A string down to high E string, and I've got the fifth fret D string, the fourth fret G string, and the fifth fret B string. C major seven. And in fact, that's going to be every single major seven chord in the book. If you want to change the key, just move it fret to fret. Okay, now taking our bar up a whole step for D minor seven, we're gonna grab the uh, bar on the fifth fret A string to high E string. We're going to have the seventh fret D string and the sixth fret B string. All right, that is a D minor seven chord. Now we can play a one, two progression. Okay, next we have the three chord, E minor seven. Just take this minor seven shape and bring it up a whole step. E minor seven. All right, now we can play a one, two, three progression. Very cool. All right, now if we remember how to play that C major seven chord shape, then we just need to take that up to the eighth fret position, okay, to perform F major seven. So we're barring the eighth fret, We've got the uh, tenth fret of the D string, and mind that on a gypsy jazz guitar, I've got a dot on the tenth fret. Okay, so I've got eighth fret bar, I've got the tenth fret D string, the uh, ninth fret G string, and the tenth fret B string. F major seven. Okay, now we're going up to the five chord G dominant seven. Just take this chord up two frets, and remove the middle finger. Okay, G dominant seven. 
Okay, so so far we have C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven, and G dominant seven. Okay, next we're going up to A minor seven. So barring the 12th fret, A string to high E string, grab the 14th fret of the D string, and the 13th fret B string. That should be a familiar shape by now. A minor seven. Okay, just two more shapes to go. We're going up to the uh, half diminished chord. Okay, I call this the zigzag shape. It's going to be B half diminished. Okay, so that is the 14th fret of the A string, the 15th fret of the D string, 14th fret G string, and 15th fret B string. Create that little zigzag shape. Index finger, ring finger, middle finger, pinky. B half diminished. Okay, then, finally, if you've got the cutaway or if you're playing an electric guitar, you'll be able to reach up here and grab the C major seven chord, basically just played one octave up. Okay, it's a little hard to bar up in this position. So I've just got the 15th fret of the A string, 17th fret D, the 16th fret G, and also the 17th fret of the B string. C major seven. Okay, so now we've just revealed a ton of very, very useful shapes, and basically uh, a series of chords that you can use for composition. We have C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven, G dominant seven, A minor seven, B half diminished, and C major seven. Okay, very good everybody. You've mastered the seven chord forms that we have in the key of C major. Now you can use that in every single key just by changing the fret that you start from. So, these are all the chords in the key of C. If I take that down one half step, it's all the chords that we have in the key of B. Okay, so very, very useful. Okay, now, there's just one last little bit of information that I wanna leave you with today. When I first started learning this stuff, I was very confused as to what determines the type of chord that I have for a given scale degree. And the answer to that question is actually very simple. If I take a look at all the chords that I have in this key, and then look at the individual notes that I have inside each of the chords, I'll notice something about them. All of them are found inside that overarching key that I'm playing, in this case, the key of C. So the reason that I'm playing, for example, F major seven and not minor seven or dominant seven or diminished is because each of the notes in all the chords have to be found in that parent scale, in this case, C major. So in the key of C, we have no sharps and flats, all naturals. And that means if I take a look at the notes that I have inside, F major seven, I should only find naturals. So on the A string, I've got F. On the D string, I've got C. On the G string, I have E. And then on the B string, check it out. I have A. So all naturals, all the notes that I have inside of this F major seven chord shape are also found inside the parent scale, C major scale. Whereas if I was playing something like a dominant seven, this isn't the chord that I have in the key because the note that's inside of that chord here, the seventh scale degree is a D sharp. And that note is not inside of the C major scale, and that's why it's not part of the key. Okay, so that's basically the explanation. Each of the notes that we have inside all of these chords are found inside of their own scales, but also inside the C major scale, the parent scale. All right, friends, thanks so much for checking out this mini guitar tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. 
As always, big thanks to my supporters at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. I hope you're enjoying all those extra resources. And thanks to you guys, I got many more lessons coming up. So keep checking in. Please subscribe, please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.